So I do most of my woodworking in the basement of the house, but since my projects have gotten bigger recently and I've started doing timber frame, uh, current project I'm working on is a timber frame shed that will go beside the chicken coop here. You can see I've got the floor deck built currently under a tarp because you'll probably hear thunderstorms. We're expecting rain. I thought I'd show you the shop I'm doing my timber framing work in. It's in my old barn. Now, I don't know when the barn was actually built. Um, the house was built in 1848, so I suspect the barn was probably not long after that. And this back half of the barn has served as a shop where in the past we built a canoe, my son and I, or actually we built a kayak, my son and I, as a father-son project. We moved here in 2007, and for the first few years, the barn itself actually was the wood shop. So my wood shop was over in this disastrous space over here, which is now mostly storage full of lumber and generator and other general junk. But timber framing takes up too much space for the basement shop, so I'm back to using the barn for this timber frame project. At this point, I'm most of the way through making all of the major framing members for the shed. You see the one long sill plate here, the other one back along the wall, as well as six posts and three girts that are all cut and ready for assembly. Um, but before I do that, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about how I'm using this shop. You can see I've got a, a finished uh, wall plate that's all done here. All the uh, mortises and joinery are all cut in this. Um, lumber comes in from outside. I'll show you all my stacks of uh, lumber I've got outside uh, staged on the timber frame sawhorses that I have a video for how I made those uh, on, on the channel. Uh, big beams come in. Usually the first thing I do is I cut them to length using this beast. It's a 16 and 5 16 Makita saw. It's capable of cutting through a six inch timber in one pass. Uh, it's, a, it's a handful to manage for sure. Uh, once the beams are cut to length, I do all my layout. If I'm cutting joinery, like you see the tenons here or here, uh, the joinery I tend to cut initially with the smaller uh, 10 and a quarter inch skill saw. And then obviously finish and clean things up just with the hand tools, with a framing chisel. You notice how I've got things kind of laid out. I have all of my hand tools and stuff I use quite frequently Behind me here, uh, the stack of timbers tends to sort of serve as a makeshift workbench. Um, laying things out, I'm using this uh, Bornman style layout template that I actually made myself on the CNC machine. I am halfway through making a video of making this thing. Uh, I don't know how many people will be interested because not many people have a CNC machine, but my goal here is to just show you what I do. And if you're interested, you'll tune in and watch. So layout is done again with this Borman template plate. It makes quite quick work of layout because it's got reference lines that make it very easy to find and draw out your joinery, which is always marked, not just with pencil, but with a marking knife. You want those accurate lines. Once that's marked out, I will cut the mortises using the chain mortiser. Uh, and then clean and finish everything out again just with the big framing chisels. I got a two inch and one and a half inch chisel for doing clean out of mortise pockets. The where I have the pockets that you see here, the recesses, the housings, I should call them, for the uh, square roll timber framing method. The housings I tend to cut. I cut the edge of them just using the small battery powered saw. I use the small saw because it's the only saw I have that can set the depth of cut shallow enough to cut these little simple cuts. So I just do the edge cut with the battery powered saw and then lots of ways to clean it out. You could, I could do a bunch of cuts and clean it out with the hand with the chisel. I find it easy. I just use a plunge router with a straight bit in it and with the line cut with a saw I can just freehand use the router to route things out. You'll notice that I've got all my power tools kind of lined up on this side of the bench and I have I'm a little short on electrical outlets in the barn but I have one uh, 
extension cord that I plug and unplug those things. The other extension cord stays permanently connected to the chain mortiser because I'm using it quite frequently. Uh, then with things cleaned out with the chisels, using obviously the framing squares to check for one and a half inch and check my mortise depth, check my layout lines. Some of the reference lines are two inches, so the other leg of the layout square comes in handy. Uh, clean up of edges just with a block plane or sometimes to clean up the faces of tendons with the planes. Use the larger plane where I have to do more heavy cleanup to square up the reference faces on the posts. Other odds and ends. Uh, this is a handy little thing. One and a half inch template for checking that your tendons are in fact one and a half inches. If you're making one and a half inch tendon, if I were making two inch tendons, I'd make a two inch template. Again, this is just cut because I can do it accurately, cut on my CNC machine. I admit to being spoiled by having a CNC machine. Um, mallet for pounding on chisels. Uh, handsaw, where some small handsaw work is done here and there. So hand tools organized here, power tools over there. Um, I recently improved the lighting. I've got all these LED lights. Uh, most of the time when I'm working out here, one of the downsides of the outside barn and the reason why I originally built the basement wood shop is it's usually too damn hot out here in the summer. It's hot and humid. So usually when I'm working, this fan is running. Turned off for this video just because it makes noise. Um, that's it. That's the timber framing shop. I actually really like working out here, uh, not the least of which is the building itself. I, I personally think it's kind of cool that I'm doing all my timber framing in a very old timber frame barn. I like the uh, aesthetic of that. Out here I have my stack of all my lumber and timbers. This is the three by material that will be my rafters. Um, I have a lot of two by material in this stack. You'll notice my canoe is also waiting out here because it used to be stored in the shop. Uh, I, all my two by this will become floor decking and roof decking of the shed. Over here I have some more beams waiting for the next project. And then at the back, all my one by material that will become the board and batten siding for the shed. So obviously I'm uh, light on wood storage. The barn itself is often used for wood storage, but right now I've claimed the space as my timber framing shop. Should give you a look at the barn itself. Kind of a cool old building. Uh, we moved here in 2007. One of the first things I did was put a new roof on the barn. It was leaking badly at that time, and if we hadn't fixed that, the barn would probably not still be with us. Back in the framing shop. Um, I guess the only thing I haven't covered is kind of the final finishing stage. Um, when the beams are all done, everything's cut, I use this polisher with an abrasive brush to sort of roughly smooth out the timbers. It doesn't leave a polished finish but it leaves them smooth to the touch and then uh, these I've painted with a mix of same mix of linseed oil and D-limonene which is a citrus cleaner the same stuff I use used on the sauna build so that's it that's my tour of the framing shop uh, thanks for following along obviously in subsequent videos you will see all of this go together so as always thanks for watching